Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a warm tale of lava and welcome. This morning, we'd like to welcome you all to our journey, to witness our journey of resilience. We are from Kiribati, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, the Marshall Islands, Fiji, and Samoa. We thank you all for coming, uh, for taking your time to come and witness our journey. We'd also like to thank the Fijian COP23 Secretariat, GIZ, the German government, uh, the Fiji Information Department, Calliope, and uh, USB. Please enjoy. Freedom, bliss. I see life breaking through. I see hard seashells breaking open. A form of resilience. I see power, I see strength, and I see leadership. But most importantly, I see the silence broken. My beautiful Vanuatu, being born in Vanuatu, is the happiest place on earth. The beautiful rivers, the white sunny beaches, and the green forest. Now, because of climate change, our islands are not as beautiful as before. People have to move for distance to fetch water. People have to move out from the coast to inland 
to make new gardens. One day, we won't have to walk anywhere because there will be no more fresh water. The messenger. In Samoa, the frigate bird is a sign of a storm coming. Sometimes we are so focused on us as human beings, but what will happen if we lose our fish and our birds? What will happen if the messenger never comes? The worst cyclone ever in my family is Cyclone Rigel. It was a heavy rainfall and the river was flooded. It washed away how copra dry and we lost everything. It was the first ever time I can see my dad was crying. My land, my identity, my elders, my family. Climate change has affected the sea level rising around my settlement of Tongoru in the province of Namosi in the Fiji Islands so severely that you can only see the tip of our grave sites peeking out of the ocean. The legend of Vaya and Apaula. There was once a handsome giant named Vaya from Samoa. His strength was known all across the Pacific. One day, two Fijian brothers went to Samoa to kill him. Vaya, having heard of their plot, went to confront them. The brothers were so scared when Vaya encountered them, but it was a woman's voice who saved the brothers. The brothers did not know their sister, Apaula, stowed away on their boat and she begged Vaya to release her and her brothers. Vaya only agreed to release them only if she married him. They fell in love and she fell pregnant and, as customary, had to return to Fiji to give birth. But as soon as she did, their brothers killed a child and threw it in the sea. Vaya, as a giant, saw everything that happened and was overcome with grief. He started, his body stopped moving stopped moving to a point where he started to turn into stone. By the time Apaula returned to him, he was completely turned into a mountain. She cried so many tears at the sight of him, she became a long, narrow river winding around her husband's body. This is a Samoan legend, but it shows our Pacific cultures go back for thousands of years, and we cannot be one without the other. Water is life. My mom has shed blood and tears to keep me upright. I see my mom strong, resilient, dedicated uh, to helping me, keep giving me water, giving me life. Losing shoes. Water is life, and our main source of water is at the ground water. But our island is only two meters above the sea level. Even if we relocate and drink the Fiji water, we are going to lose our own taste for our fresh water from our home island, Kitibes. If we don't have uh, fresh water, we have to move and we will lose a lot. You cannot imagine what is happening in my home island, Kitibes, unless you come. Come and see. But you can come and see and wear my shoes but you cannot wear them if they are lost. Zai sa tongu nu te mamarom Zai sa ku to kingu sa ke manisa Kama nauro wo matai zai Batamba sanda sana neango. When I was a child, I was carried by my grandmother under the tree to get cool from the heat of the sun. Sometimes I disobey her. 
but her love remains the same. She cares for me, she provides for me, and she protects me. I love my grandmother. I love my people of my islands. Zai sa tongu nu te mamarom. Zai sa kuto kingu sa ke manisa. Kamandaro wo matai zai batam basanda esana neango. once again. My name is Samantha Kwan and I'm from Samoa. Children should be seen and not heard. This saying resonates with me and a lot of young Samoans back home. Back in 2015 was the first ever regional conference on climate change hosted for youth. This was the first time I took part in a climate change conference at home. After this conference, we were so the young people from Samoa were so inspired, so ready to take action, that we started to go in our communities and do just that. But there was one, one of our members was a girl in a Samoan community. When you want something done in your community, there's a lot of people you have to go through. You have to go through your village chief, your pastor, your village mayor. There's so many people you have to go to. Not only was this young person from our team uh, young, but she was also a woman, which also made it a bit hard for us to get actions done in our community. But we eventually got it done. And what we, what the project that we initiated in one of our communities was mango replanting and the removal of waste. After the launch, we thought we were already successful. But around two weeks later, this, girl, um, uh, this young woman, she called me and said, Sam, I've been invited to the village Fono. A village fono is where all the village decisions are made and no young people can be in this village fono. And for us, when we realized we were invited into such an important uh, meeting, this was our starting point, our turning point to start our own group. And we did. Today, we have the Youth Climate Action Network of Samoa. And I'm proud to say I'm the president of this network from Samoa. Our message we've been sending out to our young people is if you want to take action, don't think you have to do something big. Start with something small and you'll go from there. Thank you. Samoa, 
Ai mai si o ne vam zvole. Ola lausi. But also, the people are incredibly kind, caring, and generous. Their unique culture includes lovely traditional dancing and welcoming ceremonies. Ole suinga ole tsau ole afianga le osa mo e yala esi esi. Ole omato te ma fai nei isi a wale pui pui ai ai te tai osi fa le tonu onga onga e mana omia ai te tato nga lulu e fa ata si mo se suinga le le. Samoa is a small island that is highly vulnerable to climate change. Some of the impacts are stronger storms, rising sea levels, changing temperatures, and unnatural weather patterns. When we think about climate change, we feel sad because it will be our generation that will suffer the most. Samoan villagers are making less money because their main source of income is the selling of their crops, which is getting badly damaged by the unusual weather pattern. We think it is extremely unfair that bigger countries make most of the harmful greenhouse gases, but it causes lots of problems here. We trust that you have taken what we've said into consideration and that you understand that Samoa isn't just a dot on the globe, but is a home to many and it deserves to be protected. So tell everyone to stop producing greenhouse gases and stop reducing them. Yours sincerely, Room 6, Wildly School, Samoa. Hello, Livala. My name is Eti Maliliu, and I am from Vanuatu. As you all know, Vanuatu is among the Pacific countries that are most affected by climate change. This includes sea level rise, ocean acidification that leads to coral bleaching. We have coastal erosions. We have increasing our temperatures, more hot days, Cyclones that are, more, that are frequent but more intense. Back in 2015, we've been hit by a Category 5 TC Palm cyclone that really devastated in all our lives and our environment. Vulnerable people, as you can imagine, they are the most affected by cyclone and the climate shocks. I'm currently working as a resilience program officer in the Care International in Vanuatu. As 50% of my time I spend with community members. And to be honest, it is heartfelt by seeing vulnerable people in the community that have not access to health services, that climate change our geographical settings, that make it more harder for them to, to move from place to place. Our, our women do not have the chance to stood out and voice their concern. Back in some of our islands, we have shortage of water. And some of the times that the travel town, I have to use salt water just to shower. That's one of the reasons we have to manage our water. We have long droughts, that's the result of it. As a youth, and as a person of the Pacific citizenship, my message is, please, whenever you do a a policy or create a policy to not forget our vulnerable people, our people living with disabilities, our women in households, our elderly, and our children. We can't do any policies for them without them. Thank you. Mr. School of Primary School, we got one place, the lagoon where the boys will start play football. And by the time now, yeah, only no more play football, so what time we come and up. 
Il y a un peu de temps, 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 il y a un peu de temps. Il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps. Il y a un peu de temps, 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 il y a un peu de temps. Il y a 15 ans, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps. Kau tahu sih semula min allah susu istak lo sabu solo tahu list stab sih mo all mangrove all sandwiches solo stab pe within naya milu sih every sandia i wash out pay si level res mo rentu sem untuk buat wanya run ofa every rainy fall run after mungkin sih sama lah sandwich sih mikos pay si level res mo sometimes mimi kos tu pay tem rentu mas emi tegem tu kau tahu mo at the time when I was in the climate change festival or something, I was very happy. I was very happy to go to the hospital, to the hospital, to the hospital, and to the hospital. I was very happy to go to the hospital. The forest, the tree, all of them have good fruits, all of them have good fruits. The plant is all of the fruits, all of them have good fruits. And the effect of the cyclone palm. Lobby, lobby, we move out. We call on our place. We really, we feel sad from. We spend a full year, lobby, 25 years. Lo, feel it. All good memories. Tell me, sir, by in the market now, by all. We need to lobby, we come. But we have control of several situations. We need to control them from place we live in. Problem. For that, we control the place now. But two minutes after, we move like away. We all love lobby. I think crowd in the market, space in the now. Lo, every family, we move like away. So I really feel sad to move out. Climate change, I think I want to talk to you about it. I think I'm going to be a safe place, I'm going to be a safe place, I'm going to be a safe place, I'm going to be a safe place. Yes, I'm going to be a safe place, 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 I'm going to be a safe place. Time cyclone pam i afectem i kasem i mi lo afano tu mi vela lo smog vidita mi vela i luk i af i afectem mi vela plante lo side lo solota i kamanta tu mas i tamecem sam lo laus lo mi vela mo kilim te drif mo i tencem face lo vilit mo Saya lo kakak belum mivela lo karen mivela i short lo kakak lo within one years time after kakak itu tak kampak lo please mivela lita mivela tram lo make sure si talem lo nara country we oli katol people factory ter oli tram lo produksi mol ol teknologi rata tan produksi mol fosil fuel oli tram lo switch ikon lo renewable source of energy climate change si mista kam from my immune side stop him. My name is Yula Pita Mama, and I come from Solomon Island. Solomon Island made up of many different islands, and in our country, we have nine provinces. And my province is Churchill Province, which is one of the nine provinces in Solomon Island. In my province, our headquarter or our town of our province is right on the island. And that town of ours, we have to relocate now and to move to the mainland of Choijol because of the sea level rise and the coastal erosion. What happened in my town, not only in my town, but it also happened in my own community, in my village of Pangwe. The seas keep on rising, and we have to relocate and to move inland. And when we move inland there, there's land issues as well. There's a lot of things that causes there. And I was thinking of what will be it in the next five years or 10 years time, if this sea level rises continue to keep on going on, what, we sh what shall we do? As a leaders, as a youth, as a youth, what shall we do for this thing that is keep on moving? Thank you. La 
Ne cenze on la bi problem lo we amigo la person is time do country blo mi wan. Then la mi cen el ma fe film now said lo si en la mi. Then said lo si em se puede now go ta borrows la dai el fish no sabe sta. Then said lo lan spend the most gardenings said lo avesti em no take place now lo right time for avesti. Aku tak korus belum fela di sini aku tak ada. So aku tak big visa hot. So aku tak small visa nama aku tak stay. So di sini time aku tak go take him aku tak small visa aku tak go market atau sem. Emi aku tak no sabi film sem small tu mas. In time em drought em sun tu mas em se sun long time em abik tini fela tu saya low water. Islo ya mi fela isim nama tank. Then well, then not a spring water loy. If I like use for wash, cooking, swim them, time in hard time, if I like boil them, then drink them. But time in high tide come, I mix with in salt, so if I like hard for taking water. Here, I have to set a new name at any for river. It's a community that comprised from people that moved from Lord Howe to Small Island Atoll. In 2014, they have become victims of a flash flood that caused 22 lives and millions of dollars damage to our infrastructure. But now, um, young people have taken up a responsibility to uh, become more resilient. Of our community, Come up with them one for the idea for make them one for the warning us warning system where them all the time before before time disaster him any disaster happen. If I come up now with them just for the disaster management plan for up from now just for the alarm and then by him solving a little bit some for the damage is going to. Let's say make out small stuff of garden but like this one yeah. I put them up bricks and then cut up some gravel, put them on the dead leaves and something. They put them down for place for resin place a little bit. Make them to serve it grow not to cut up like that. This time rain and rain from us and then inside we have some flood. Yeah, inside the village we have some flood. So, youths of Solomon Islands, we understand the effects of climate change and we are willing to take the lead in building our future and we need uh, donors and partners out there who have uh, uh, money and who wants to help out know that we are willing to uh, build a better future for us uh, despite the effects of climate change that we are now currently facing. Good morning, everybody. Yahweh. Yahweh in my language um, means hello. It also means love. So, Yahweh to you all. My name is Broderick. I'm from the Marshall Islands. And I'm currently a student at Shamana University of Honolulu in Hawaii, studying environmental studies. OK, so back in 2016, we were hit quite uh, um, hard um, with a series of westerlies that was followed by the El Nino. During that time, uh, before that, my family and I, we built a traditional hut house outside, our, um, outside of our home, right by our seawall. And like our brothers and sisters in Kiribati, our island, um, island nation, our coral island nation is only two to three meters above sea level. So, you know, just a little bit of storm surge would mean destruction to all the coastal homes. Back to the... Um, back to the storm surges. So during that time, during the westerlies, we saw a bunch of waves coming into our, onto our um, home and then taking little bits and bits of that traditional hothouse that took us almost a year to build because we had to get traditional um, taches from, from the outer islands. And so to be honest, uh, seeing, seeing that see, and experiencing that moment made me feel like, I, like climate change was taking little and little from me as well. And once that one big wave took, took everything from us, that took that entire home from us, you know, I felt like, you know, this is the end, you know, this is, this is something, you know, like this is, this is it. But 
But, um, but we, I looked around and I saw my family standing together, um, coming together as one and um, you know, telling each other it's going to be okay, telling each other everything is going to be all right. That inspired me to come here and tell you this story of resilience. You know that even though, even though we're going to be struck by many more storms, we're, we're, we're going to come back stronger. And my message to you all is to listen to our stories, share our stories, and also to hop onto this canoe and let us paddle against climate change and towards climate justice. Thank you. And one of the major impact is on the fisheries. We have coral bleaching. And when we have coral bleaching, we have all these um, coastal uh, species of uh, fish that are not there anymore. The rest of the Pacific and the world is looking at looking at us now. We are not burning anything. We are only using wind, solar, and coconut oil. All about sustainable sea transportation, and it's really working, really working well. Morning, everyone, and Maori. Uh, Maori is how we say in Kiribati. Hello. My name is Kabo Wachon, and I'm, I'm from Kiribati. Uh, Kiribati has only 33 islands uh, scattered away, and only two meters above the sea level. Uh, currently, 
I'm working with the Ministry of Environment, Lands and Agriculture, but based on one of the islands, which is Abeyang. Uh, in the, my role there is, uh, is doing all agricultural activities on the island. Back in the year 2014, uh, my home island, is is declared as uh, one of the first island organic in Kiribati. The island going organic is really help uh, vegetables and uh, cr crops survival for the prolonged drought. However, we, we have no markets. So to create the markets, I built my two. I built a, a local resort starting with two starting with two starting with two bungalows and now I caught fifteen. From there my farmers really happy because they have a market and uh, Right now, we have a lot of tourists coming to our island, so the demand for vegetables is increasing too. And I'm really, really proud and happy because the way we live back home in Kiribati is not contributing much to the climate change. Before I end, I would like to share my message to the whole world that we are small nations, we are young, new, young youth for the future generation. Please remember us when you're making decisions or policies because it's always, always reflect on us. Thank you. Kiribati is, uh, is located in the, near the equator and it consists of 33 islands scattered together. Like uh, some islands, it's only two meters above the sea level. This is our beloved country and this is our, our main roots. This is where we belong. So as a father, uh, I might be afraid that there would be no more land for my children. I'm going to go to the ayaknya <laughs> I love my little islands of Kiribati and there's there's such a unique place in the world and for me it's it's really one of those places that has to be preserved it's like the last memory of humanity where like, you have true freedom as a human being. And sure, don't underestimate the problem of climate change. It's a big problem. But also don't underestimate us as a people. As you can see, people are trying to, to um, protect themselves. They build the sea walls. Kawa <laughs> The 
This is how we greet each other in the islands where I'm from, and you could probably guess which that is. So my name is Annie Dunn, and I'm from the islands of Fiji. Now in Fiji, I'm from two provinces. One is called Namosi, and the other is called Nanranga. Now what that means is that my father is from the province of Namosi in Fiji, and my mother is from the province of Nanranga in Fiji. Now in our country, as people, as Fijians, our identities, our culture, our tradition, every part of you is usually based on where your father is from. And so for me, that would be the settlement of Tongoru in the province of Fiji, in the province of Namosi in Fiji. So earlier this year, I had lost my father and my uncle. Now in our culture, it is tradition that you bury your family members who have passed away in your village or in your settlement. Unfortunately, my family and I were not able to do that. Now you might wonder, why would I be telling you about my father or my uncle's late passing? See, the reason is climate change has affected the sea level that's around my settlement of Tongoru to the extent that the sea has risen to such a point where our gravesite and our ancestral graveyard is completely underwater this year. And so what that means is that I and my family were not able to bury my uncle or my father as tradition calls for. See, climate change isn't just something that affects us personally or physically. It's something that as islanders, as a Fijian, it affects the very core root of who we are. It affects my identity. Finaka. You're in tune with Radio Fiji One. At least six people are... You're in tune with Radio Fiji One. At least six people are feared dead following a tidal wave whipped up by Hurricane <laughs> <laughs> Nilangilamba <laughs> Singani Wangarambula Natamata Nakana Sanga me and Rotaki Nadani Lambo Koko, Dakilabina can get a degree five Kaluna the Babunagan is in the Elkin Nambula Nasinga, the Nasinga is a Singabandum Bulas are climate change is what's affected my family personally. My father and my uncle had both passed earlier this year and we weren't able to bury them here in um, in their village, in their settlement. i <laughs>
My one thing I would ask them is to stand united, especially for Pacific leaders, to stand grounded and also as small island states, as international leaders, and stand with Fiji in terms of working towards that progress of reducing emissions to at least 1.5 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, I realize I have shared a rather personal effect of how climate change has affected me and my family. And my Pacific Island friends before you, as well as myself, are here to showcase that we have several different aspects of how climate change affects us. These are six different nations represented before you. Not all of us are affected in the same way. And so what we ask for this morning and throughout this conference is to be able to take that into consideration. It's not only our food security, it's not only our homes, but it's, it's our livelihood. We are here to remind you that we farm, we fish, we hunt, we dream, and we live exactly and just like you. So as my Pacific Island friends and I would like to say, please listen to our Once again, thank you, and we hope and we believe that you all understand and feel the stories back in our homes and in our islands. I have now have the honor to call upon Ms. Mary Sini Vuniwanka, Fijian Minister, for women, children, and poverty abelian to come and give her remarks. Thank you. Good morning. We have only a few minutes, so I hope you'll forgive me for dispensing with formal salutations. Uh, firstly, I want to thank the government of the Federal Republic of Germany, and in particular the GIZ, for their truly marvelous support. Their partnership in this event is just one of the many ways that they have teamed up with us to make COP23 a success and to help us all meet the objective of adapting to climate change and arresting the advance of global warming. And I want to congratulate the six voices of Pacific Youth. As you can see, they are young adults who are launched on their careers. They're very impressive. I think we can all agree to that. They are thoughtful, civic-minded, determined, optimistic, and idealistic. And these are exactly the qualities our world needs in this struggle against climate change. Thoughtfulness, because there, there are no easy solutions, and all voices must be heard. Civic-mindedness, because we cannot meet this challenge if we think only of our short-term needs. We must put community first, whether it is our local community or the community of nations. Determined, because we have a hard fight ahead of us against the demons of nature that we ourselves have unleashed. Optimistic, because if we are to win this battle, 
we must believe that victory is possible, and we must always keep trying. Idealistic, because we are striving for an ideal. And although we may need hard-headed solutions, those very solutions will emerge from the idealism of people who care deeply about our planet and our future. We have seen here today how six people, six youths, from different countries in the Pacific, who didn't even know each other a short time ago, can come together to produce a beautiful, beautiful and insightful videos, uniting as one voice. They aren't video professionals, and they aren't professional entertainers. They're six very intelligent young people with good ideas and generous hearts, and they're happy to devote themselves to something that is much larger than they, much greater than all of us. So I'm thrilled to send these voices forth with a message to the world from the Pacific that the crisis is now, the solution must be now, and the commitment must be now. Thank you for the remarks. Secondly, I would like now to call upon Mr. Rene Gejhorst, Director General of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, to come and give his remarks. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to thank all the six of you that sh you share uh, those precious time you have here and have, that you invited me to also um, give some impressions. Youth makes up more than half of the world's population. Young people below 30 make up more than half of the world's population. Still, they're really underrepresented in those negotiation spaces, especially young people from the global south. During the last intersessionals in May, there's been, during the first week, there's been one young person from the global south representing all of them. And I think since youth is the, will be, uh, since young people will be the most affected, they are on the front line of climate change already. Um, they should have more space to show what they are doing and um, those initiatives they take are the ones that are, sorry, uh, those initiatives they take are the ones that are actually doing something. Um, they come together, they have been active, um, and they have, sorry, to start again. Um, they have joined 1,000 other uh, young people the, the, during the last week here in, in, with, from 140 nations um, to, show, to work together, and they have, they have been working on climate actions. They are not victims of climate change. They are the ones taking initiatives. They are um, especially doing something to help uh, each other, and they are working together. And I think we should showcase their actions more. We should give them a voice here. And therefore, I want to um, invite you all, and I want to invite especially the delegates and the official politicians here, the people negotiating to give them the access to help them showcase what they are doing. And I would like to thank you all for what you are doing, uh, because I think it's important that those voices are heard. Thank you. And finally, I would like to ask Ms. Ingrid Gabriel Oven to come and uh, give her last remarks. Mauri, Bula, Talofa, Alo Olketa, Iaquel, hello, guten Tag. I would like to thank you for your impressive performance and for bringing the voices of the youth from the Pacific Islands to Bonn, to these negotiations. You touched my heart. And I think not only my heart, but many of those that are standing out there. And I hope that your voices are being heard throughout the negotiations and that people are being reminded what actually climate change means. It's not about aggregate figures. It's not about lost national economy figures or finance. It's about the livelihoods, the people, the fisher, 
women, the fishermen, the communities that have lost their houses and have to change the way they are living. So climate change is real, and I think this is the core message that you are bringing. And additionally, you are bringing the sense of urgency that is needed. And this is also embedded in the slogan of the Fijian presidency. Further, faster, together. Well, the faster and the further certainly is the plea to those nations that have contributed most to glo global warming. And you are the ones that are most affected. And this certainly is not just. So we have to correct the course um, of history. We have to mitigate faster than actually the national contributions indicate. A three degree warming, a world with de three degree more in temperature is not a world that would secure actually the survival of your nations and of your children. And I think this is not something that we can allow to happen. So many, many thanks. It has been a privilege for the German government through GIZ now since 2009 to support um, the Pacific region, 15 Pacific islands, in adapting to climate change. We are also dealing with renewable energy. We try to support your resilience as far as we can and as far as this is feasible under the prevailing conditions. But we know that, of course, the conditions are worsening. Um, but nevertheless, it has been a privilege to be at your site and count on us um, that we are continue to work with you. And please continue to raise your voice. And I uh, want to rest assure you that I think we have to make sure that those conferences deliver off the promises that we made so that you as a youth have a future. Thank you. Thank you all three for all the powerful speeches and remarks. I would like kindly to ask the three of you to come up and for us to have a good photo. And for everyone behind, uh, please be patient and everything finished will be, have time to um, ask questions and to interview if possible would like to. Thank you. Thank you.